Hello everyone. First of all, I want to thank you for clicking in this video and for watching it. Um, my wife, uh, she shared a dream that she had and I thought it was very prophetic and I asked her to see if she wanted to share it with us. And I believe uh, in times that we're living in that it's definitely something that needs to be shared. Okay. So I'm going to let her uh, take over and, and explain. And by the way, I'm Phil and uh, this is my wife Larissa. Hi everyone. So I had a dream. It's been a little bit of over a month now. And in this dream, my family and I, my, my husband, myself and our daughter, we were taken to this place that was kind of like an island. And not only us, but other people were also taken to this, to this island. And we knew that that island was some type of concentration camp. The other people that were there, they had no idea what was going on. They just thought it was like a cool place that they were taking, that they were going to be there for a while or whatever. But we, we knew that they were taking us to this place that was some kind of like a concentration camp. And they were, uh, and they were queue us there. And at some point while we were there, I managed to bring my parents over to this island so they could see what was happening. Uh, I don't remember I, how I was able to bring them over, but I was able to bring them just so they could see the place and they could see what was happening there, who was there, the other people that was also there. And so we told them, hey, they brought us here because they're going to kill us. And they're like, oh, no, you guys are crazy. That, that That's nonsense. And we were like, no, yes, we are here because at some point they're going to kill us. And they were like, they were told we were crazy. And they had like, no, this is not possible. This is not happening. And then at some point I told my dad that this is in the Bible. The Bible says that one third of the population is going to die doesn't say how but it does say that during the tribulation period one third of the people are gonna die mm -hmm. so if, if i may just add a quick mm -hmm. little note on that um the book of revelation uh, chapter 9 verse 13 through 18 uh, talks about one third of the population dying and that's uh by the sound of the sixth trumpet so i just wanted to add that so yeah, I told them that and they were still could not believe what we were telling them. So I told my dad, hey, here, take my phone and you we just like would swap cell phones. So I had his and I gave mine to him so he could we could communicate while we were there because everybody that was in this like island, they had all their, their phones were being tracking. So I, I could not call or text anybody because they will they will see. So I told him, hey, keep my phone, and I kept his phone so I could, we can communicate. I can text you, call you, so you guys, we can tell you guys what's happening here. So, yeah, we did that. We exchanged phones. We don't, I don't recall, I don't remember in the dream why just some people were in that place. And, for instance, why my parents were not in that place at that moment. I don't know if they were going to be brought, if they were going to be, uh, to be in that in that place anytime soon. I, I don't know that. I just know that some people were there, and we were we were taken to that place because at some point they were going to kill us. Do you remember uh, recognizing somebody? in that island no i don't i don't remember and i don't think i recognize anybody i don't recognize who took us to that place and i just know that we were there was it like a, a private uh, company or is this like a private entity or was this more of like a government um type of facility that was being tra that were transferring some citizens mm -hmm. over to the island i don't remember now okay i don't remember if i could tell who was doing that. Mm -hmm. Could you see any weapons in the dream? Did, no. Was there any like soldiers or exposed no. to weapons? No, I, I, I don't think there were there was anything like that. 
Okay. The train. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the thing, uh, do you have anything else to no, add? No, yeah, I was just going to say, I don't know what was the criteria for us to be taken to that place. Uh, just like a group of people at that point, or if everybody was going to be taken to that place, I don't know what was the requirements or the criteria that they were using to take this large group of people to that place. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is that we, a lot of times, we forget, but the Holocaust, what uh, Hitler did to the Jews, were very similar because the Jews didn't know that they were going to concentration camps to be killed at all. So the narrative was that they're going, that they're going to take them to another place and that this other place it would be taken care of. There's wars going on. So the people thought that they were going to be going to a, a safer uh, location. And then also at this location, they were able to bring a luggage. So if you, if you stop and think about it to, to them that were being taken, uh, being able to take just the luggage was horrible, but at least there was hope. You know, they had the hope of, um, okay, so we're going to be there temporarily. They're going to allow us to take some clothes. And then when things kind of settle down, then we're going to be able to come back to our, you know, our regular lives is uh, what they thought. When they arrived at these concentration camps uh, by these trains, there were Jewish musics uh, happening so that they felt welcomed. You know, they would go into facilities. They had these rooms and they would tell them, hey, listen, um, settle down. And then when you guys uh, get settled down, uh, here is the place for you guys to take a shower, you know, so that you can get cleaned up and things like that. And they thought, oh, great. This is wonderful. This is actually a nice place. They got Jewish music. They got a facility f for us to stay. They even got showers, you know, uh, not knowing that those showers were uh, gas chambers. So they did all that to kind of uh, keep from a rebellion, uh, from a, a rebellion to happen. They did that to keep it, you know. And so uh, that kept uh, pe the the people, the Jews, um, a little bit more calm and more submissive, and you know, being respectful and and, and following the rules, so that they didn't uh, cause this rebellion mentioned. Uh, so. Again, uh, this to me sounds very much uh, like that. Let, let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, what are your thoughts? Do you guys agree? Do you guys disagree? Um, we don't really have a lot of clarity. It's just a dream that my wife had and um, it was pretty prophetic. So I, I asked her to come and, and share it with us. This dream was uh, probably the, it was the first week of January is when we, we figured out. So it's been a little while since, you know, it happened, but I said, hey, let's make sure we put it up because we don't want it to forget and we don't want to keep it from sharing with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. So, uh, and yeah, and without f further ado, I want you guys to also, when you have a minute, uh, check out my other um, social media uh, platforms. So you guys, uh, please, I'm gonna ask you guys to go in there and, and follow. Uh, I do a lot of Bible verses and, and prayers, um, and I believe that it's very important for us to stay connected in such a time as this as Christians. Amen. Was there anything else you would like to add? No. That's it? All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. May God bless you guys. And I'm leaving also a book that I wrote in the comment section um, and probably either on either site here so that you can click in and also take a look. Okay? Again, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Take care.